Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, welcome to, what is this, like our third or fourth or something live stream? Yeah, we seem to do one of these every big milestone. Like We, we say we're going to do one every three months, and then we end up doing one maybe every six at the most. Yeah. Yeah. But 12 hours is a long time. It is, it is a long time. And it takes a lot of time out of our day, and we really want to keep people moving forward. So that's usually why you see Todd and I in these. Cause that's right. We can keep other people moving forward and we can take the brunt of this. Yeah, so the other thing we usually do with these is we use them as ways to try and raise additional money to mm -hmm. give us a little bit of a bump, which is always nice. Uh, we'll probably do some of that today as well, but it's too early in the morning <laughs> to be raising money right now. So um, we'll get to that later, I suppose. We have some packs that uh, we've been threatening to put online. So in theory, we'll try and do that. Um, that'll all come later, though. Uh, so, yeah, so today they're going to see a bunch of demos from all of our, our developers. Yep. Uh, you'll see some cool new stuff, things that you may have seen, things that are coming in the future. Uh, and obviously this one is centered around the release of our first campaign stuff. Yes, which is, it's coming along. It is bumpy, but uh, it's slowly but surely making its way through the... Um, through the uh, the normal pipeline and the new revised pipeline with the test server uh, to get out in front of everybody. So it's it's an exciting time, but man, it's also crazy around here. <laughs> Our test server, which we put up backwards, yes. which is still hilarious to, to many of us who have done this before. Your live is your test and your test is your live. Yes, and, for reasons. And, and it's confusing. You're like, why did you do that? They're like, well, reasons. And yeah. you're like, okay, all right, does it work? All right, so Mr. Blair, what kind of stuff are we going to cover today? Okay, so <clears throat> basically lots of things that have to do with Campaign World. Okay, yep. um, love it. See some environment stuff. We're going to see some of the new character sheet stuff. You and Billy and I just did a rigorous pass on navigation of skill trees. Yep. We're going to see the results of that. That's, that's all shiny and chrome, and I can't wait to get that in game. Um, we're going to see cleric. Cool. We're going to see some of the cleric stuff. I'm going to show some more of we the... We froze. Oh, no, we're back. Yeah. I'm going to show some more of the race class discipline stuff. Cool. Which uh, I think I will be showing the Ganeshian Knight. Are you going to do any racials? Go through any racials? Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show his racial burrow and some of the other... I know that it, it looks like it froze, but we're still okay. Um, we're going to see some of that. And then what else do we have going on from the artist? Oh, Greco's going to do a piece for us. Okay. Billy's going to do a piece. Oh, look at that. Hey, we got a Taco Bell commercial. Do we, are you guys seeing Taco Bell over there? No. No. Your stream made everything. Mm. I have the whole uh, schedule. <clears throat> what else we got? Here. Just read it. So I'm not trying to read it out loud. Um, pretty much. Oh, we're going to see a, uh, a Faye animation. Actually, an assassin animation now. Okay. But he's going to do it on the Faye rig. So it looks really cool. I've already seen the beginnings of it. Uh, we're going to see a campaign demo. We got some Greco time coming. Greco painting something. And uh, Billy, I heard so you you're on here like half of the yes. sessions. Yes. <clears throat> Blair Day, basically. I know, and I was Happy like, Happy Blair Day. I'm like, oh goody, a telethon. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I've been on camera a lot this month because we've we've upped our cadence of, of video stuff. So. It's all good. You guys find out good information. You get to see fun things. You get to see the sausage being made, as we like to say. Yeah. After that thing we did with Doggett last time, you'll find a better uh, better analogy. Um, the factory, the chocolate's being made. There you go. It's the fact. Yeah. So as we can see how the... Well, anyway. <laughs> so what so, else? It is still too early. I do not have my coffee yet. So, so apologies uh, for your, your seeing our bright, chiming, charming faces. As we are in the morning, which is um, I'm always I not anything anybody should be subjected to. I don't need the coffee. Todd does, however. I yeah, I desperately do. No question. How do you guys in Maine? Oh, coffee. Um, I, I'll get some in a minute. We have so, coffee in the. Uh... So first up this morning is going to be Mark with the cleric powers. Right? Yeah, he and I are doing the. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm doing that with him. But okay, that... so when you guys do that, that's when I'll sti I'll I'll skip over and get some coffee. Maybe a donut or something. Well, I don't think you're back on until uh, just popping in every hour. Um, but you don't have a you're not you don't have a bit. Yay! Hooray! They don't want to see me anyway. <laughs> Except for the finale. They're tired of me. 
They're tired of you too, actually. Let's get some new blood in here. Uh, Let's get Max on camera. We'll just yeah. we'll, we'll ask him design questions that we know he doesn't have the answer for, and grill him. Yeah, and I looked at the schedule yesterday, and he's like, "Hey, here's three hours of Blair Q and A." And I'm like, "What? <laughs> Seriously?" Max three? Loves to be on camera. He's like, three hours of Q and A? No, we're gonna do some. Showing stuff is always more fun than answering questions, but we will take some questions now. Sure. If, if people have some questions for Todd, because this is probably your your big chunk of the day where you're going to see Todd, and then we're going to kind of put him in his office. I'm and... back at the very end as well for a big Q and A's kind of thing. By then, though, there's usually been a lot of shot taking, so it gets yeah. to be a lot more interesting. Okay, so here's a question: Day night cycle. When's it going to be out? So we got it in. But the problem was it just didn't, the night cycle just didn't look great. I mean, literally like the programmer got it working and then somebody has to go through and set up all the keyframes of right. here how, here's how the lighting should look all day. And the person who was supposed to do that was John and he was out of town. So we've, <laughs> by the way, the last month or six weeks has been absolutely hideous from, uh, I mean, that's when everybody leaves. It's right? summertime. It's summertime. It... So it's like, hey, we've got this bug. Who's going to fix that? Oh. Well, that's on Mark. Well, who else can fix it? Not Nobody can, really. This is a particular thing that's on Mark, which we hate. We try to not do that, but it's kind of with a project this big, it's a big project now, it's inevitable that you're going to have some things that are really bumpy and painful when you have lots of people out. Val has been out for the last three weeks. Um, Gordon just got back from, from Spain. Spain and literally... I've seen him this morning for the first time in three weeks because before that, I was in Ireland with my family. It's just been a crazy time for people being out of the office. So it's made getting updates and stuff uh, very, very bumpy. And you guys, have, I can tell, have noticed that because I see posts on the forums like, where's the patch notes? Oh, yeah, sorry. We forgot the patch notes last time. It happens. It's just, it's hard when you're dealing with such a small team and such a large project. Yeah, and every when summer. Key people are gone. Yeah, every summer. I mean, you can't tell people they can't go on vacation, right? You're just like, oh, well, all right, we just work around that problem. Right. So. Exactly. So back to day night. John O'Neill was out of town. He is back now. It's just a question of having him sit down and do it. The reason that we decided to actually push it off is because it is purely cosmetic. It doesn't do anything yet. There's a follow-on task to have it start to adjust things like the spawners for monsters and harvestables and things like that. That doesn't work yet. So uh, <clears throat> we'll get back to it. It's just another thing. And, and unfortunately, to get the air balloon had to have some altitude, you have to occasionally throw some things over the side. And for this campaign milestone, that's one of the ones that we made the call. We just need to move forward. Let's yeah. not wait for it. So. Well, so we can talk about the phase of where the campaign is right now, right? Because we're in week one, yeah. right? So right now it is still us propping up the testing stuff. We're trying to make sure the dragon statues work. We're moving that functionality to the thrones for claiming the keeps. We basically want to make sure all of the pieces work. Yeah. Right. And we're just propping those up. And then we're going to add uh, in the bigger map, they're going to get a bunch of AI so that they have things to, to fight in the beachhead areas. They right. get the leather. We need to put leather in. That was just a mistake. Yeah. We actually intended to prop uh, Bloodbath at the same time. The big tyranny. But that, uh, well, I thought the there was supposed to be a Bloodbath map coming up also at the same time. And I don't think that happened. No. So um, it's just, it, there's just so many moving parts right now and it's very hard with so many people out. But so. you're going to get the bigger, so you've got Tiny Tyranny now. There's a bigger version of Tyranny, which has the three bases and, and um, it's just a bigger, bigger, more fleshed out thing. It's just, we didn't want to bring that up as the first thing. Yeah. Right. But there's a lot of claimable spots. I've actually, let, we haven't talked about or released anything of the map because Fog of War, but there's, there's actually, uh, I mean, the one they're in right now, I think has like one of each, right? Like it's, it's not really an actual map. No. It's specifically a system testing map. So I tried to explain that in a founder's update um, because I wanted to set expectations that this first version that was going to come up, there were going to be a number of systematic problems that anyone coming into it actually expecting to be able to play a real campaign, I knew was going to be sorely disappointed. And we put it up last weekend, and guess what happened? There were a bunch of systematic problems, right? Um, I mean, the... the the fact that a single Ganeshian with stealth could go and claim the entire map, that's an issue, right? Sure. That, that has to be fixed. So there was a handful of those. I actually, we went through yesterday and collected all of the feedback over the weekend, plus our own testing feedback. Uh, thank you guys for that. It's, it's hugely helpful. I categorized it all and sat down with Max and went through it. 
and the um, uh, there's probably I want to say somewhere between six and twelve that are giant showstopper bugs that are actually like this is going to stop a campaign from being functional. Sure. <laughs> and then on top of that, of course, there's dozens and dozens of like. Hey, this fryer power doesn't work. Why? So I, I collected all those two and got them to Mark, and he'll do what he always does, which is just make a run through and, and yep. fix as many as possible. Um, so uh, and the stat doubling one, that one's that one's irking me. Yeah, yeah. There's so, a handful. We're also um, we've got the new character sheet stuff coming online. That's right? in, that's in the race class branch. Which, are you guys going to show that? Yeah, today? Susie and I have an hour okay, on that. Okay, great. So um, that is it, it. It's great for a couple reasons. One of which is that. Uh, it's just for the obvious reason of now I have a character sheet and I can start to puzzle out how this game system actually works. That's mm -hmm. kind of a big deal, right, for an RPG. The other one is it's starting to bring to light bugs that have been in there for a long time that we just weren't able to really tell what was going on because that data was very hard to get to. Yeah. Um, so so both of those, I think, will be huge benefits to us. So. Yeah, we're starting to get to the system. Like, obviously making the MMO is moving a thousand pebbles one t tablespoon at a time. Right. Right and I and mean, a couple boulders. Right. <laughs> right, but now we're getting to the points where we're getting a lot of. I mean, uh, we haven't talked about the guild stuff, which is is getting close, and like secure trading, which is getting close. We have a lot of other little things being built in parallel to the campaign worlds coming online, and those things are are, are finishing up as well. Yeah, uh, Jack, can you let Max or somebody know that they we haven't even tweeted? They're just saying you haven't even tweeted or updated or told anybody that this event is happening, and that's true. Um, this is what happens when Val and everyone else is gone. So you can tell I'm a little annoyed by this. I, I don't like vacations. As a general rule, I think vacations are terrible. They should not be allowed. But, but you just went to Ireland for two weeks. I know. I don't, I'm not even a big fan of my own vacations. <laughs> Honestly, uh, I did have a lot of fun. It was it was cool, but I don't. You like, got some great pictures of yeah, falcons and and castles and castles. God, my wife saw so many castles. She wanted to throttle me by the end. She's like it's another fucking castle. So yeah, I've been to Spain multiple times, and it's like, hey, let's go to a let's go to a famous church or let's go to a uh, cathedrals. Like, yeah, we well, need more cathedrals. It's like cathedrals and castles, and you're like, oh goody, here's another one. And they're always too small because, like, I have to duck because all the doors come up to <laughs> my chest. So I'm all hunched up walking up these flights of... Yeah, you're a half giant. Yeah. By those standards, you're a half giant. It's like, God damn it. All right. Anyways. Well, now you have more classes available to you. Huh? Yeah. You're half giant. So yeah, that's, half that's giant. Cool, right? Half giants get some fun stuff. Uh, with all the racial stuff, I'm kind of happy with how cool... Because every time I describe a racial power to somebody or, or a kit... Everyone's like, that's really cool and really overpowered. And I describe another one, they're like, that's really cool and really overpowered. Yeah, they're like, all really cool and really overpowered. That was the goal, was to make them all really cool and overpowered because... So, Tennis wants to know more about my vacation, so I'm going to go ahead and tell him. So we, we did both Northern Ireland and we did uh, the Republic. We started actually Dublin, then Belfast, then Antrim Coast, then down near Galway, and then back to Dublin. It was a really... We did, just did everything but the South. So, and I, I'm not <laughs> kidding when I said that we stopped at like over a dozen castle ruins and I took pictures and I just constantly was sending those pictures back to John O'Neill and Melissa. <laughs> just like, hey, here's another here's another doorway. Hey, and you described another... the food as good. The food was great. No, it was really good. I mean, the... No, it was uh, really good, surprisingly so. Because everybody had warned me, oh, you're not going to love the food. I loved the food. It was outstanding. So. Like it's bland and it's terrible and it's all haggis. It's like the one dish that's that... that's more scotland okay. the, the, the the haggis is more scotland no it was a lot of uh, a lot of fish and chips okay um and a lot of guinness but i love fish and chips and i love guinness so fish and chips is generally I don't, delicious i don't see what the downside is of that and they John are an Reese. island you know so they have access to fish unlike here in texas we don't really have catfish which doesn't count it's the worst of the fish yeah because they're bottom feeders they are they, they eat are all the trash feeders. and they're guinness is both food and beverage it is. Guinness is, and it tastes better there. They say that, and it is true. Okay, so back to actual questions related to actual things. Um, so, uh, let's see. Has the Frostweaver design weapon been finalized? The Frostweaver has not been finalized. I was printing out the cleric thing today, and I went down the list to, I've got a big list of all of the, the bubble docks that we call them, that we do. And the last one on there is Frostweaver. I'm like, wow, we're down to one major class to build yeah i haven't designed it yet but uh it's on there and i was like it, there's one yeah, yeah i, no, I can remember back when we started and that list was all empty and now it's, it's all full but one 
It's also interesting. We found that so historically, you guys have rem will remember that we've always done meet the blank, right? Like meet the knight, meet the confessor, meet the whatever. Yep. And uh, just going through this last week, it occurred to us that we're going to have to break those now because it's races and classes and they're two different things. Yep. Um, so I think we've got one of those coming up. That didn't go out yesterday, did it? That goes out Tomorrow? Thursday. Okay. Yeah, it goes you. Meet, meet the Elkin. Meet the Elkin. So it'll be our first time that we do a full rundown of uh, of a race runestone. And there's actually enough there to warrant a full update. Is Like you said, every time you make one of these, everybody looks at it and goes, oh my God, that's completely OP. And no, it's just interesting and, and different. And some combinations will be OP. And we'll have I, to I am that. absolutely sure, but there's, there's so many variables now. I mean, we went from a game that had very little customization. You played a knight yeah. and you had no customization. And now we've got oodles and oodles, I guess, is the best way to describe it. I mean, there's just... Well, that's probably not the best way, but that's the A way. <laughs> oodles and, I, and oodles. I don't know why my brain stuck up with oodles and oodles, <laughs> but I seem to remember some uh, some commercial from the 80s. Yeah. But yeah, so some Murdeer coming to you later this week. Mm -hmm. um, and then are we going to go back, do you think, and do write-ups on all the other races? Or do you think we'll just kind of cover them and stuff like... Uh, I think if things. we get a strong enough lore piece on each. There's already tons of lore on the website. You could always use more, though, couldn't you? I yeah. don't know. Maybe. Yeah, we, we, we need more lore. More lore. Everyone loves lore. Especially if we, uh, we've we been talking about going through all the skill nodes on the skill trees and adding a little lore element to each of them to tell really the story of the Crowfall universe and add all of that lore in because it's super interesting. And now that we've gotten past, like, basically erecting the sides of the house... We need to start decorating it and making it a a fun, interesting place. Okay, so Quasidoc said, why are you putting a paywall for testers for the current testing phase? 542, for example, this will be the norm. So, first of all, it won't will be the norm. It's always been the norm. This is the way we've done it since the very beginning. And it's not, I mean, I, I guess the easy answer would be to just assume we're jerks, but that's actually not the case. So when we put out a new build, the problem is that when you add players to the build, the more players you add, the more likely the issues are to cause stability to go in the crapper. Right. So if you add one player and there's a 1% chance that they're going to hit a bug, add 100 and you've got 100% chance that they're going to hit the bug. So what you do with the new build is you put it out and you put a small number of players into it first. And then over time, you add more and more and more players as you get the stability, as stability allows. So I, I guess the question could be, well, why weren't you democratic and just made it a random raffle, why did you go with the highest paying backers first? And I guess there's an argument to be made there, but it's not a new thing. Like the Kickstarter came out and yeah. said the higher dollar packages are pre-alpha one, pre-alpha two, alpha one, alpha two. So we've done that since the very beginning. So um, I can understand, you know, some people saying, oh, I don't like it, but it, it's, it's not an uncommon thing and it's not something that's new. So uh, it just it is what it is, but that there is a very practical reason to letting in smaller numbers of players first and growing it over time is that's the right way to test these systems to to get to your stability. It's very very rare that you can build something complex and dump it immediately in front of a hundred thousand or a million and people it just and works. just works. It, that almost never happens. You al you always need to increment your numbers into it. So yeah, and MMOs are I always like to describe them as a big giant spider web. You. You touch something over here and the, and the web starts to jingle yeah. or break up here and things that we didn't even touch for months. You're like, how did that break? How yeah. did doing damage break? And you're just like, ah, somebody touched something and it just caused the web to break on the other side. So it's those early tests are great for finding out things like that. So um, so uh, the reason that I answered that one is because it happened to be the one that I looked at um, most recently. Have you tested the number of bots, the 200 Ranger video that we never saw in action? Uh, we we try to run those tests and then we break things and we try to run those tests and we break things. That's just, we're, we're still in the phase of development where we're adding stuff so quickly that it destabilizes and breaks everything. So, um, so yeah, I mean, we have to get there. We know that we need to get back to running that stuff. The character system has completely been redone since since we did those original LOD tests. Remember that? That was two telethons ago. Wow. Okay, so, yeah. 
So yeah, we've had to, we've 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 had to completely redo the character system. I think twice. Well, and so with race class, the prefabs just got completely rebuilt. Right. Again. Uh, it's that's just kind of one of those things that happens through the course of development. You build the system, and then you figure out you need more functionality, or you figure out you need to optimize. You figure out, hey, we're doing this now, and that changes the way we need to do these, and you go back and you do it again. And poor Greg always cries after they rebuild the prefabs every time because it always breaks weapon trails. Yeah. Every single time it breaks <laughs> weapon trails. Now, however, so with the race class stuff, we had to completely break the weapons out of the prefab, the character prefabs and now it's its own thing which is how we were able to get dual wield working and weapons across all of the uh the races and classes so before it was a big issue and it actually bloated each particular prefab because we had to put that weapon in the prefab now there's its own weapon prefab and they all share from it so it's it's great for reuse and it means that we don't have to do a lot of uh bloat in those packages and hopefully the weapon trails will stop breaking all right so we'll be able to store vessels we aren't using uh basically can, uh, can vessels be stored and the assumption is yeah i mean they're yes that's the whole point of the vessel system is that those things are basically objects they're stored as objects so you'll be able to move them in and out of the bank you'll be able to actually put them in containers um so there's they're going to be stored just like any other object and we just went through the process of actually getting building attachables to store as part of building so if i attach right. now a flag on the wall of my house and then i pick up that house it actually encapsulates that within the deed so that if I later go and drop that house somewhere else, that, that flag is still there. It's not lost. Right. Um, which is sounds, I mean, it's it's one of those things that to you guys sounds trivial, and of course it should work that way. But that means somebody has to go build a hierarchical data management system where objects can be stored inside of other objects. They're basically containers. And they're, yeah, they're effectively containers. So um, Bentley just worked on that. Uh, but uh, back to the vessel, once you had a discipline into a vessel, and you swap to a different vessel, we're gonna refund that vessel to you with that discipline in it. So you just can't pop those disciplines in and out of there. You're gonna to wanna to keep those vessels because you may only have one version of Juggernaut or one version of Bard or one version of whatever, and that's in your particular human vessel. Now you can use that same human vessel to jump between different classes that are available. So if you wanna use the human vessel with Bard in it as a cleric or a knight, you can do that, right? Because it's a human. So, but it is an inventory object and we're talking about where to put those in the inventory. So DM Brandon's here. I've actually seen him tweeting a couple times. So I'll go ahead and take his question uh, because he, he seems fairly upset about it. So he's basically saying, you guys have changed your philosophy in terms of selling stuff. Why are you selling stuff now when you said you originally you wouldn't? And I actually, I just disagree with that. I don't think we have changed our philosophy. If you look at the Kickstarter, the things that we sold there are the thing, same things we're selling now, and they only can affect your kingdom. So I'm sorry if that was a misunderstanding in the beginning, uh, but it's not something that's new or different. It's just that's the way it's always been. We had packages in Kickstarter that we sold. Mm -hmm. We sold package uh, parcels and we sold castles. And those are the exact same things that we're selling now. Um, that's all we're selling. I mean, you can't take those things into the campaign worlds and you can still build everything with in-game resources that you can get in the shop. Uh, they're also cosmetic. I mean, while they are cool, I can have a big, cool castle. It's not giving me any benefit in my EK, um, and I can't take it to the campaign world. So I still believe that that line is a good one. Uh, I can totally understand if you're frustrated and you don't agree with that, um, but it hasn't actually changed. That's the way it's been since day one. So I know you're not going to like the answer, but I'm not going to shirk from it. You asked the question, so there's your answer. So... Uh, Stoneborn, how are they going to be interesting and unique with the race class split? Split. Have you gone through Stoneborn yet? Have yeah, you Stone, out? Stoneborn has their things. I just haven't shown them yet because I'm kind of showing them as uh, a piece by piece, piece by piece. piece, just to keep kind of uh, a through line going here over these next couple of weeks as race class comes online and we knock out all the bugs with it. I don't think I'm showing them today. I'm showing Ganeshian and maybe Half Giant. We'll see. So uh, uh, the original Stoneborn art that we did way, way back in Kickstarter, I don't think any of that, unfortunately, is going to be usable, right? We've, t we've changed the way characters are structured a couple times now, and back then we didn't even have the ability to do customization of art, like oh. armor or anything. Um, so I think we're going to have to, unfortunately, that's going to be a redo. Yeah, that but, model is an entire redo. But stylistically, they haven't changed. Correct. So, um, But yeah, it, functionally, that model was never meant to equip gear, right? That, that's... 
those are whole other models we have to build, yeah. right? It just doesn't like, oh, hey, hey, Todd, I found this breastplate. Just put it on and your appearance magically changes. It's not that easy. How is the, uh, how's the race class, or not the race class, the, um, the weapon split coming? Where are we in that process? Uh, it looks pretty functional now. We, we got all the big bugs knocked out last week. It's going to be math problems in the future, and that's what uh, Mr. Howlish has been working on as part of the new uh, skill tree redesign for the combat trees is budgeting that people are naturally probably going to take mismatched weapons. So if you take an axe and a mace, you get the benefits from the skill trees for all axe skills and all mace skills. Mm. So that's a pretty significant advantage, which probably means most people are going to take mismatched weapons. And we're talking about a way to uh, give benefits for people who take matching pairs, just because that's also a cool thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't want for to force, effectively force everybody to use a knife and a fork. Basically. <laughs> <laughs> you can use two forks if you want to. Um, but we're that's tech that we need rather than tech that we have. So we're building with what we have right now. And uh, it's it also caused some... Uh, uh, we had to redo some crafting stuff so that you get correct uh, power cost multipliers on both of them because you have two weapons now, right? And then we also added power cost multiplier and more stats to shields. So shields are now considered offhands, right? So basically breaking all of that apart, and we were assuming that that was never going to happen. And it's kind of funny. You, you build all one way, and then an engineer's like, hey, look at this, and this is actually way easier for us to do. And it's like, all right, well, let's go back and redo all the math. So. so you've now gone through all the powers as well and figured out which ones should be dual wield powers and which ones should be <coughs> single powers so that if you use one weapon but don't put one in the offhand... It won't let you use that it power. It won't let you use all the two-handed powers, but you will be able to use the single one-handed power. Right, powers. but generally we gave like Ranger, for example, all of her powers or all of the Ranger powers, because now they can be males as well, were animated as two hand things yeah. so they all require two hand things because it would look silly if you had a weapon in this hand and a punch in this hand hey speaking of ranger uh are we gonna make some changes to the to the stack size for testing yeah we'll increase some very air. very po a very popular request over the last couple of weeks well longer than that but yes we're gonna increase the arrow size all right stack size. so there you go well we're gonna do that for you guys it, I, I know that's not a long-term solution we're talking about how to fix it long term but initially at least we can give you some larger stack sizes and larger crafting recipe results right yeah. so we'll, we'll create bigger stacks for you uh on arrows as a result of crafting so where do they find their key that's an interesting i bought the the bundle where do i find my I game key Okay, good. Thank yeah, you, Jack. Customer support. Um, so, uh, during Siege Perilous, the physics engine was broken. Has it been worked on six, since? Yes, it has. Um, and the, it's one of those areas where we basically have a dedicated resource. There's very few areas where it's like, all right, we need a person on this full-time kind of forever. But physics and movement is, the, is probably the biggest area we have an engineer that's dedicated yeah. to it. And it still is... is constantly constantly needing additional work and additional love so um but yeah it is it is back up and running in fact in this current build you can get in uh to the siege equipment though of all people i think cool waters you may want to hold off on that <laughs> since it hurt you pretty badly this weekend uh he got he got yes stuck in a trebuchet forever forever and um, then he even dying he got warped still back stuck into the, the trebuchet, trebuchet. i think uh i think prison mark, box yeah mark fixed that yesterday yeah, so that that will at least not happen in the future. Yeah, in the way in the exact same way, it could happen in a different way, like you get warped right next to where you were, but it's not the same. Anyways, we fixed that specific bug from the weekend or from last weekend, which is always good. So, will we see the ballista back soon? Uh, where's the ballista actually? That so the reason that one was a little weird was because it's basically. It's a constructible asset on top of another constructible asset, right? Mm -hmm. it, it worked before because it was a constructible asset on a wall and the wall was fixed. But now those walls start as foundations and grow to walls. And so there was a little, there was something that was a little weird with that. Did we get that working yet? It should, like once a siege starts, that should be able to be built. Okay. I'm... So I think that's probably why you guys haven't seen it then, because the siege rules are turned off right now, yeah. and you just claim things by going up and tapping. Right, right. in, the, cap things, in so. the bigger map, there is a whole, we've declared a siege, I'm, I'm sieging your town, right? And there's a response time by you, and then various things start spawning. The, as we, the hippos for the, uh, the catapults start spawning, excuse me, <clears throat> and the hippos for the ballista will all be active at that time. 
the walls can't be repaired. Like there's all kinds of rules that happen when a town is under siege. So you guys haven't seen that yet. And you will start to see that in the bigger uh, tyranny map. Once we stand that one and put it in front of you guys. All right. So when are we going to see dual wielding shields? Dual wielding shields. Well, we have the we have a well. There's a lot more characters going to have shields now, right? It used there to be is just the knight, but now you can have a Ganesian with a little shield. You right, have but a dwarf with a shield. His his main hand wasn't animated such that his animations would look good with two shields. Right, that's just oh, a dual wielding bow shields, two shields at once. Yes, that's yeah, that's I, what they're I don't asking think for. We're probably going to do that. There's a I think you do that in Dark Souls, and there's um, there's a couple other games that have that, but you make animations for it. You just don't slap a shield in, in the spot of where a one-headed base should go. Uh, so a uh, question was about walls and passable gates um, and whether that's going to wait on sieging. And no, that, that stuff should have been in. It just wasn't quite functional. I think the problem was initially there was no way to take down the fort walls. Like it was just impossible. There was no way to deal, to deal damage to those. Mm. So the fear was if we would put the teleporter on for this last weekend, people would build up the walls and then they would have an imp- penetrable fortress basically of solitude they could retreat to <laughs> so jonathan left the doors open initially um but now with this next version that comes out you should be able to destroy the fort walls at which point we can put those teleporters back in so that you can actually have only faction members zip back and forth with basic gates. attacks so with a basic attack you can beat on a wall yeah you just walk up to the to wooden walls <clears> can be destroyed <throat> just with normal basic melee attacks the um the stone walls still require siege, siege i think weapons. the confessor basic attacks will work as well the fire okay. the fireballs oh cool all the basic attacks yeah right. eventually we will make a special attack that is a wall breaker attack and and however we do it if you equip a hammer or whatever we will figure that one out yep any work towards npc and sh- npcs and shops not really. The, so I can tell you the steps that have to go through to get there. So, um, so we need to fix the um, camera so that slotting things inside of a house isn't broken. And we were working on that. When I left, actually, Bentley was working on that. So I need to go by and check and see how that You should that hassle looks. him about that. Yeah, because attachables, like I want to put a Merlin on top of a wall. That worked great because the camera kicks up and looks down. But if I was inside a house and I wanted to put something up against the wall, like I want to put a relic in the corner or whatever, it would put the camera up outside the house, and that didn't <laughs> work very well. So we needed a different type of camera setting for attachables. Right. Then we needed to set the crafting stations up so that they have a particular socket type and they can go into those corners so i might have only four sockets that allow for crafting stations and then the next one was going to be vendor stations which effectively will likely be like crafting stations only instead of putting recipes in there you will put a thrall deed or whatever sure so there's a couple steps that need to happen none of them are particularly challenging or particularly risky from a technical standpoint it's just things right it's, it's just, work it's just work and so in order for that to happen somebody has to be assigned to that work and the same guy who would be assigned that work right now for example is working on fixing the world map because there were issues with it that came up last weekend so it's, it's just a question of time and energy so we'll get to it and we know how it's going to work it's just a thing we haven't quite got to yet so it's moving all those little pebbles yep so are you going to put blocking in for scimitar druids at some point it's broken. Um, yeah, sure. <laughs> they say you said it a couple times ago. Yeah. I, I don't recall that, but I wasn't in the room yeah, for that. I'll, so. I'll, uh, I think that's on my list somewhere. There's so many things. Yeah. <laughs> so many things. Yeah. I'm so that we must have a lot of people playing druids, by the way, or druids are way more broken than everybody else. Well, because I mean, in the play test last weekend, yeah, I, when I was going through looking at all the bugs, I'd say probably half of them are druid, and then there's a couple that are Ganesian, and a couple that are ranger, and then a splattering of others like disciplines and stuff like that. But I mean, one of the two healers. Why do you hate druids so I much? Just, yeah. Actually, I like the druids a lot. They are; they're pretty cool. Um, and I and I like the uh, I like the scimitar druid. The the whole forego healing to be a, a damage dealer, pure. 
Uh, will there be skills that create, and I think by <coughs> skills they mean powers, that create obstacles such as creating bridges across things and stuff like that? I would love to do that. I think <clears> that would be really cool. I've, I've really wanted us to be able to do ice walls and stuff like that. Um, well, yeah, I mean, the whole, um, the ranger archer stake was always supposed to be a destructible object. Right. Right, it's just, we haven't paid for that tech yet. Right, it's just another it's damn just thing. It's just another thing. It's another damn Would thing. you like everything? Yes, I would like everything, and I would like it now. Yeah. Unfortunately, we, we don't build I like would that. like it now. I'm the most impatient guy in this office. <clears throat> I want everything, and I want it last week. Uh, so, if, if I have to be patient, I guess everybody else does too. It yeah. sucks. Yeah, um, I mean, we still want things like totems and stationary pets and all kinds of... Uh, I think those things will come online and we'll make them into disciplines, right? Because the discipline system is just so cool, right? Um, we will get to those things. It's just, it's time. It's funny how you, you take a look at these systems, right? And, and you actually, you know, list out how much stuff you still have to have to get done. And it just, it, it always seems daunting. It seems like a never ending list. But then if you look at the list of things you do have working, which I did recently, um, it's also a mountainous work. So we've actually got a lot of stuff behind us that's just surprising and shocking how much there always seems to be more. And it makes sense because you're comparing in your mind, right? You're comparing games and development to games that have been out for a decade. Right. And those games that have been out for a decade have had a team working on them, adding stuff to those games every single month going back for 10 years or whatever. Right. So um, so it, it, it is kind of interesting because it's stuff that you don't really think about that that really kills you on projects like this, right? We spend none of our time talking about the stuff that's actually spend, that we spend 90% of our time on. 90% of the work is unglamorous. Like, all right, I want to be able to loot a monster. That means that when I kill a monster, concept of combat, it's a big one, and then I actually destroy it, take all its health out, I have to now take it and spawn a corpse. I have to get that corpse to float, not embed in the ground, not be above the ground. I need that to be an interactable that I can go up and use it. It needs to open a container. That container needs loot tables. The loot tables need to be filled out by someone and then balanced. I need to be able to drag things out of that to get them in my inventory. I need to check the container rules to make sure that I don't overflow my inventory. I mean, there's just so many little pieces to do that somebody actually has to do. It's like, just take, now I need to check the overflow rules. That's a task that somebody, it just doesn't happen magically. Right. You have to go to an engineer and go, hey, I need to check the overflow rules. And they're like, all right, well, that's gonna take me four hours or a day or whatever. If you include the bugs, it's everything is at least a day, yeah. right? And so then they go and they build it and then they finally get it working and they're like, great. And you get no credit for that. Even in our own minds, I was like, I'm not giving any credit for that. Of course it should work. Of course you should. Of course you should be able to loot. Of course you'd be able to loot monsters. Oh, so, and then after that, they become corpses again. So you can harvest them. Right. And then you have to do a whole bunch of, and then dubers fly. And then who picks up the, it just, it's just, it's, it's, it's a giant cascading amount of work for trivial things that you just kind of assume they should be there. And what's funny to me is, is that's really what kills people when they set out to do an MMO. Because they, the, that's never what we talk about, right? We always talk no. about the big ticket. What are those one or two things that we're going to do that are going to be unique? That's going to make us right. different than WoW. But just getting to the point where you have a functional game is years and years and years of experience. And I, uh, a lot of people that don't get it. I assume that now some of you guys who have been watching us since the beginning, you're gonna directly see that now and you understand how long everything takes. And it's, uh, I mean, it, it's, it's not, there's no way this is just a problem with our team or any other one team because this is every team. They all take this long, right. right? Every game, wow, takes this long to get things done. And they have all the resources of Every, all the resources in the world. So, um, but anyway, so there you go. There, I don't know. I got off on a rant about how, <laughs> how long it takes. How to long do. it takes to do every little damn thing, and how impatient I am. So, all right. So, uh, any other last minute questions before we start to set up for our next session? Will we see more deadly and numerous monsters soon? I miss zombie hordes. Yeah, yes. we need more monsters too. So if I look at <clears> what <throat> is lacking in the game experience right now, the lack of monsters uh, is is just a, a clear and obvious hole. It's one of the um, bigger things I want to get to after we finish the race class split. Right. It's just our baseline PVE experience where you can just log in and just go beat on zombies or whatever. Once you start actually having to... Um, look for those minor disciplines on creatures 
and loot tables rather than... And resources and, re and materials. Right. right, there's all kinds of things you're going to want to kill the NPCs for. Again, there's a huge list of things. Our old AI wasn't very good. It couldn't follow you and swing at the same time, for example. Right. It could either follow you or it could swing at you. <laughs> it couldn't do both of those things. It couldn't walk and chew bubble gum, do the whole... Yeah, so we're going to obviously improve that. They will be more interesting to fight. That is the goal. They will be more lethal at nighttime is one of your yep. side caveats, as well as they will behave just like resources on the ranking system, where if you're on a rank three parcel, you're going to get rank three NPCs. If you're on a rank 10 parcel, you're going to get rank 10 NPCs. So risk versus reward, go fight the stuff that you think is most challenging for the, the level of stuff that you have and the level of skill that you have. And actually, somebody just mentioned Gordon. He actually is back in today. He got back in this morning, or I think he got in last night, late last night from Spain. So um, he's probably tired and jet lagged and grumpy, but he's, he's usually grumpy anyway, so that's all right. Uh, so he'll probably come in at some point and say hi. Um, and chock full well. of whatever bugs he picked up on the airplane. Because <laughs> it always happens. Yeah, if he's... If he just got in, I can't believe he's in the office. Somebody's commenting on my chair being posh. These are actually the worst chairs in the office by far. Those are like the $30 They chairs. fall apart constantly. They are crap. But I was hoping to solve the mesh problem that is no longer an issue. So, uh, Hey, they're asking you a swig question. Where's that? Where creature handling roots be used in any way. ID is my favorite part of Swig, and I'd love to see the mechanics like that in Crowfall. Well, thank you. Uh, I appreciate that. Uh, it was one of my favorite systems to work on, the Beastmaster system. In fact, Halish is over here. He worked on it as well. We had a great fun time. Didn't we, Mark? We did. Building that system. And once we get to animal husbandry in Crowfall, as well as the capturing of thralls to make disciplines, I think you'll probably see some of our familiar design touches on those systems. Uh, somebody, uh, Tan has asked about mounts. So um, uh, the biggest thing that's going to delay mounts is going to be content. Um, there is work that still needs to be done there on the engineering side, but a lot of it actually has been done. Technically, the catapults and ballistas and stuff like that are mounts. mounts. Yep. Um, and in fact, the catapults that we originally had that moved around were moving mounts. Um, so at one point, a lot of the pieces were working. Uh, but it, you know, as is always the case, when you kind of leave it behind, it starts to have code rot and content rot. So as Cool Waters found out last week, yes, weekend. we're going to have to bring all that stuff back. And uh, um, so I, I wouldn't. There's again, there's nobody specifically right now tasked with get the mount stuff in and make it finished. But a lot of the pieces are there, so it's slowly moving forward like everything else. Progress mm -hmm. bars. That's my life. Everything is progress bars. So. Uh, are you still planning on having plant harvesting? Uh, it's in the trees. Uh, if we have time, I'd always like to do that for the alchemy stuff to make uh, uh, herbalism, plant harvesting. and, and Again, it's content at this stage. So. Uh, that's technically the same as, as any of the other harvesting things, right? Mm -hmm. Is we'll create little POI harvestables. They'll spawn. You use a runestone tool to get them. They'll, you know, shoot some stuff out. So that is a literally that one shouldn't require any code. That is a design and art gated task. Yep. Can art give us the nodes? The, there's a bunch of work they have to do. There's a bunch of effects work. Um, there's some animation to make uh, the the sick. Actually, the summoning should be the same to make the sickle. Yeah. Uh, but that's what we would call a content feature at this point. And you're like, hey, we need some more content. A lot of those things that don't cross the finish line end up usually being a game's first big patch after they launch. So for us, some of these things are just going to go to that bucket where it's going to be post-launch. I don't know where this one's going to land based on all of the other work we have to do. He said a new tool needing more space on the UI. <coughs> it really shouldn't, actually. That the, the, There's the three main tools, right, that have dedicated slots. Yep. And then that fourth slot That's where the knife card. goes is the wildcard slot. So any new and other tools that you would have, you get to pick which one goes in that Correct. slot. So, I mean, again, we have all of the systems on that. We just need time to do the content. And that's, like for us, that's, that's a multi-week task, right? I mean, it, it's, yeah. it takes a considerable amount of time to make all the loot tables. I mean... And tie to the recipes and stuff like that. Yeah. And make some interesting recipes and not just kind of shotgun it out there. So, something I want to do. We'll see what happens. 
Uh, Tennis was asking another thrall question. Do we fight them or press F? So we actually haven't gotten to that yet, obviously. My assumption is that we're still going to have a fighting mechanic and that it would be tied into some kind of capture power, uh, which may be as simple as you have to kill them within this summoning circle, like you drop it or something I was thinking like it's that. like a little iPhone app that you pull up <laughs> and there's a monster there and you spin the little ball. And yeah. We don't know yet. No. So, yeah, no, we haven't worked out the details. Yeah. Um, but I don't want it to just be as simple as an F to interact because that's kind of lame. I, I, I want there to be gameplay there. So, and and yes, I, I think just like fighting larger monsters requires a group or, far, you know, or trying to siege requires a group, I think it would be cool if fighting larger uh, creatures for capture. It's not just thralls, by the way. It's our capture mechanic in general. Because yeah. what we'll end up wanting to do is come up with a general capture mechanic we use for mounts, for pets, and for thralls, and then use the same one across all. So, um, would be cool if some thralls required a group. I like Zybek Pokemon. Look at that. There you go. Um, flick your VIP token at it to capture. Yeah. Again, we don't know what it's going to be. I'm sure we will um, make something fun, exciting. Yep. All right, so we got about five more minutes. If you guys have any other questions to hit us with, will you change you have to toggle instead of holding it down? I don't know. Yeah, don't know the answer to that one. I mean, basically, I know why you want to do it, so you can look around during our long hold times. Right. Um, but the reason some of those are long hold times is to give people time to knock you off that throne, which is the dragon statue right now. Right. Or know that you're vulnerable during that time, wait for them to go into it. I mean, there's a whole bunch of counter option gameplay there for people who are waiting to ambush you or do other things while you are essentially vulnerable. I think there was a time when we had, um, we had talked, like even the inventory, you were supposed to zoom into it and you couldn't see the rest of the world, right? Just creating all of these vulnerable moments that someone could basically come up and hit you with a sock full of pennies in the back of the head. Yeah. Can you quickly go over block mechanics as they are right now? I don't know what's different from with our block mechanics than they have been in the past. Halish? They're broken um, <laughs> time to time. How's I'm that? That's different. Yeah. <laughs> I love they're broken right now. I don't recall seeing that one from the weekend testing. Yeah. And I didn't try no, it block is Block has been working. For, I mean, it's got a per tick cost. To, you can stat mod it. There's all kinds oh, of... We made it so you're not immune to crowd control while you're exposed while blocking. That's that's the oh yeah. That's so the only change, yeah, if you get exposed, then out. someone can use that as a block breaker and knock you out of your block. That means that block doesn't make you basically immune to everything. If you've been exposed, and to do an exposed style attack, you need a specialist around, and generally they have to be in stealth to put make you exposed. So that's kind of to sum up that whole thing. So basically, there is counterplay to blocking now as long as you have a specialist around. Basically trying to give everybody something that they do, right? There's always a reason to have this guy. You just can't be like, well, I don't like anything that specialists do, so we're just going to ignore them. Uh, somebody mentioned auto run. So we're supposed to have that. <laughs> it's left and right. If you hold left and right mouse button yeah. down at the same time, it's supposed to auto run you. We're supposed to have it. It's just another damn thing. So I've seen that ticket. I'm like, we, we should know this. I know. Yeah, because it'd be great if you could just left, right to move and also hit one, two, three. Right. Because W and two does not work. Kills me. Well, it works, but you just, it's not, my hands don't do that. So a uh, uh, question about soft launch time frame. So we haven't updated our, our time frame. We're still just saying end of year. Um, really, that's going to come down. I'm hoping by then it'll come down to do we have all the content in that we need and do we have, I mean, literally just like, okay, we've got five more art assets we want to add or we want to add these trees. Um, so not design content, but specifically art and bugs is the bug is a quality there. Um, I felt better about that a couple of months ago than I do now. Campaigns has been very, very painful for us to get out this first iteration. Disruptive is probably. Um, yeah, it, well, it's just been, it's been, uh, it's, we've had, we've had trouble getting it up. We've had um, issues with getting the live test server stuff sorted out at the same time, which is just painful. Um, some of these are growing pains. They're not unexpected necessarily. They're just, they're hard, right? 
And we, you know, we made a decision that we needed to move over to a uh, different operating system. We Linux. On the back end, and we wanted to go to Linux. It makes sense. I understand why we need to do it, but it's just another damn thing. So, um, so we'll see. We haven't done any kind of new update or announcement uh, relative to dates. Um, we're kind of playing it by ear at this point and, and continuing to iterate on things as we decide they're not good enough or going back and fixing them. That's always been my mantra is I care way more about making the game great than I do making a particular date. Which is obvious since we didn't ship last December, right? Right. Um, and, you know, and anyway, you know what? Race class had an even bigger disruption than... Yeah, it did. But it was the right answer for the game. It so. absolutely was right. But the nice thing about that was things that we didn't think we needed, like going into the skill trees and being like, hey, archetype trees don't make sense anymore, right? The race class trees and the new layout right. makes total sense and they look great. And Mark's been working on those the last couple of weeks and you might get to see some of that today. Cool. Cool. Okay, so we're going to shift over to Mark Hallish, and I believe I'm in this segment as well. And we're going to show you the cleric walkthrough. 